Welcome everyone. In this video we're going to be sharing with you our food forest and some lessons that we've learned along the way. About four years ago my wife and I decided we wanted to try a food forest. We really liked the idea of permaculture and gardening. We kind of wanted something like a Garden of Eden. Something that we could be self-sufficient to a certain degree and grow some of our own food. We tried vegetable gardens, but that was a little bit more work. <laughs> so we went to the perennials. So I'd like to walk with you and kind of talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages, the pros and cons, the things that we've learned along the way. If you're interested in any of these plants that you see in here, as I'm walking through, feel free to comment and ask questions and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. Something else to note, we do live in Southern Florida. So what you see here may or may not grow in your garden. You might have to do some research on it to see if it will. And real quick, as a disclaimer, make sure you're 100% of the plant before you use it for food or medicinal purposes. I'm gonna try and focus on only food and medicinal plants in, for this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first off here, we have basket plant or Calicia fragrance. This plant here is, um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a great ground cover has these wonderful flowers that probably blooms twice a year. They're very fragrant. The bees love them. There's, there's really not any bees on them right now. It's still kind of early in the morning, so they're probably still waking up. But great plant, great ground cover. Uh, some countries use it for <clears throat> medicinal purposes uh, to treat viral infections. We haven't done that. Again, guys, do your research. Make sure you know how to use the plant if it's safe, uh, potential allergies. So keep that in mind. Downside to this is it loves to creep. So you really have to keep it contained. You could take advantage of that too. And you could use it around bases of your trees like this and it will block out other plants that you don't want. So it is a good weed block as well. Chocolate support or chocolate pudding tree massive let me see if i can get a fruit here for you there you go i haven't tried these to be honest with you but my wife has and she likes them they're not um they're not so appetizing when you open them up i mean to me they kind of look rotten because they're all um brown and mushy looking <laughs> I'm not really a big fan of pudding anyways, but anyhow, she likes them, so that's that's good. That's what's important. Moving on over here, we have some pigeon pea. And these are great. These are great plants right here. You can use these for nitrogen fixing, and you can propagate them so easily. Look how many seeds we have. And this this actually came from one plant that we started. This one here. I started from seed from one plant that we had bought and now we have dozens of them. I mean, wonderful plant to use for fertilizing your, your garden naturally. And again, it's, it's edible. You can eat the fruit off of them. So that's pigeon pea. And this one here is, is a newer addition. This is blackberry jam. Blackberry jam fruit. Let me see if I can get that katuk out of the way. There you go. I don't know if it can stay still. This is blackberry jam fruit. So we haven't had any fruit on this yet, but we're looking forward to trying that one. Again, blackberry jam fruit. And behind it, over here is katuk. This you can use as a green. You can eat the leaves off of it. But I have read or I've heard 
that you shouldn't eat too much of this because it has a certain compound that's not good for you. You know, you, again, you got to do your research because there's there's always, you know, one person will praise the plant, another person will say it's not good. So there's pros and cons to everything. Okay, over here, there's papaya right there. We've planted papaya in just various locations of our yard. Here's another one. And then there's a much taller one behind it. It uh, got knocked back from the cold. Let me see if I can go around there and show you. There you go. So you can see how it died back from the cold and then it just branched out. We cut it and then it branched out from that point right there. And now we have four stalks. Moving over here, we have a jackfruit. And I, I like jackfruit. If you guys haven't tried it, you gotta check it out. This, this, the fruits on it supposedly can get up to 90 pounds. I mean, they're massive. Uh, they're, they're referenced to tasting like uh, the, the gum juicy fruit. The chewing gum juice, juicy fruit. So if you know what that tastes like. Um, one of the biggest lessons I should mention that we've learned is really know what the plants can handle. We had some really low temperatures a couple years ago, and this died back a lot of our fruit trees. We lost quite a bit of our fruit trees. This died back, I believe it's below the graft. So we probably lost whatever the graft was, but we're still growing it. We're still gonna see what the rootstock will be. And it's it's coming back pretty good. But that's jackfruit. And again, keep in mind, you know, what your temperatures are gonna be. You might you might have to cover your plants or do something to prevent it from, from freezing. Back there, we got some bananas. We've planted bananas and papaya, just different areas of the yard. There's another papaya. That one didn't fare too well this year from the colder weather. Um, this is on a lower, it's kind of sloped the property down here, so it's in a lower area. So my thoughts are that's probably why this one didn't fare as well as the others that were on higher ground. So keep that in mind. If you have low areas, that cold, from what I understand, will settle in there and it will uh, cause that plant more stress. We have a mango here. No fruit from this one yet. Over here we have a Barbados cherry. These are excellent little fruit. Uh, you get them quite often. We have another one in the back that I'll share with you that's bigger. Well, we've, get, we've gotten fruit probably at least two times, maybe more a year. Behind it over there we have a Balimbi, which is Supposedly related to the star fruit. The fruit's not the same, but um, check that one out. That one's interesting. We've had to, the reason why we have bricks around it is we tried to use that as a heat sink um, to try and keep that from getting any cold damage because the past few years it has been knocked back to the ground. So again, that's one of our hardest lessons was, you know, dealing with the cold. A lot of our fruit trees, they're they can't handle it so you really gotta find out as much information as possible before you plant anything you don't want to waste your money we've spent a lot of money on our on our plants and we've <laughs> learned the hard way so this is a star fruit right here carambola no fruit on it right now we have in the past, so we should be getting some pretty soon. Should start to flower. Those are excellent. Great, um, great dietary fiber right there if you need it as well. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when I was a kid, I remember getting into a star fruit tree with a friend and we ate those and just kept on eating them. And it wasn't long before I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we have two macadamias right here. One there and one here. 
and they are loaded. This one at least is loaded with flowers. So we're really looking forward to at least flower stalks. This one's starting to flower right there. But we're really looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll get a nice batch of macadamia nuts. There's some flowers right there and there's a bee. There you go. This right here is Wampy. So another fruit tree. This is a new addition to our garden. Um, we haven't had anything yet, obviously. It's still pretty young, but it is very good. It's a sour fruit. So if you like sour fruit, Wampy is an interesting one to try. We, I really liked it. We went to the fruit and spice park and we tried it there. That was, um, that was really good. That's when we decided we need to get one. Over here we have a loquat. I've shared a loquat, one of our loquats in another video. This one here, here though is younger. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's younger and it's doing much better because it's in full sun. And check this out, it's already got some fruit. Already got fruit. And these are really good. I love loquat. So over here we have a mulberry tree. And as you can see, it is loaded with fruit. We love these, these are good. You can have sweet and sour if you wanted to. Take the uh, purple ones for a little bit more sweet. If you want them sour, get them red. <laughs> the birds love them too. This is an ever-bearing mulberry. So you can grow these down here in Florida. Probably at least half, t half the time out of the year, we're getting fruit off of it. So excellent, excellent source right there. And right here we have the cherry of the Rio Grande. This one's a fairly new addition. We had one before and it didn't make it. So we got another one and tried a different location. Another thing to consider guys is your soil pH. You need to know your soil pH for some of these plants. Also, you know, obviously keep in mind water and sunlight. Those are big factors as well. So where we had this one before, we learned that it wasn't the right pH and it wasn't getting as much sunlight. So we moved this over here and it is doing wonderful. Again, it's a young plant, so we haven't had any cherries yet, but we're looking forward to that. So back over here, this one is a native to Florida. This is cocoa plum and it gets fruit on it. In fact, there's some right there. So they're just little, they're like grape sized, but they do have a very large pit. So there's not much, you're not gonna get as much out of them, but it is something to eat. It's not especially tasty, but it is edible. And it makes a nice living wall if you wanted some privacy. Forgot to mention this one earlier. This is the peanut butter tree, peanut butter fruit. It gets red fruit on it and it tastes like peanut butter. It's really cool. Something weird about that, but that's the peanut butter tree. So back here, we've got this mound. This area is a low area and it, it floods if we get a lot of rain. So we mounted this up and we put, planted a lychee nut in there. As you can see, it's covered in, in weeds as well. So. That's another lesson that we've learned is it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to maintain around your plants. Um, these right here are actually goldenrod. These, these have died off. So those were actually planted, the, the dead stalks that you see. So we're hoping more goldenrod will come back in. But there's, and there's, there's some other plants in here actually to mention. This is um, Biden's Alba, the white flowers or Spanish needle. That. Supposedly you can use medicinally if you have cold-like symptoms and you can eat the greens in your salad. Supposedly has more nutrients than spinach. Supposedly, like I said, do your research. But again, that's another lesson, guys, is, you know, it's a lot of work. 
but also <clears throat> we've kind of left this like this for a reason too since we were in cooler weather we wanted to try and insulate our plants um, so we kind of let the weed grow around the base to kind of help from frost um, in the past we had some sugar apple and sour apple over here and they died back from that cold that we had a couple years ago so for this one we mounded it up it's a little bit higher you can't really tell because all the weeds but we mounted it up and we let the, the the weeds grow in a little bit now that we're getting into warmer weather i'm going to weed that out and let it breathe a little bit better that's another thing to consider is you don't really want to choke out your plants um, unless you're trying to potentially protect it from frost for a short time. But long-term health, you want airflow. Behind there, it's not a um, edible plant, but this is a perennial sunflower. And there's some stalks on it. It flowered not too long ago. These are nice for the pollinators and they're great living wall. They're also used a lot for chop and drop. So if you're trying to build up your soil, this plant, I mean, I could, we could mow this down with a tractor and take it all and use it for compost and it'll grow back. It'll grow back really quick. Um, that's the disadvantage to that is if you're trying to get rid of it, it's not as easy. You gotta get it out from the roots. We have some yucca. This is yucca right here. Let's see if I can get, get to the leaf. It's, growing, it's reaching for the light. There you go. So we can harvest the, the roots off of that and eat that. And it's so easy to propagate that. Um, I believe with yucca and chaya, you have to, there's a process to eating the leaves. You have to cook it a certain way. So make sure you do your research on that if you do grow yucca and chaya. Here's chaya over here, but I'll show you another example later on, but this is chaya here. So it kind of looks similar, but it um, has different leaves. Another banana tree there. Right here we have a grummy chama cherry. Very slow grower. We have had fruit off of it, it's good. But it's very slow. This is one of the first fruit trees that we planted and it is one of our smallest. It probably would do better if we moved it into more sunlight. This area over here only gets about six hours. That kind of leads me into the next lesson that we learned. We kind of, I shouldn't say we kind of, we did plant abundantly and you should make sure you have enough spacing for your trees and and know how much sunlight they need. So that's something else to consider. Um, we wanted more and more plants and we just didn't have enough room for them all, but it was worth it. In hindsight, we'd probably do things a little bit differently. So over here we have a Suriname cherry. We have various Suriname cherries around the yard as well. Uh, this one, I believe, is a red one. We do have a black one as well. As you can see, there's some fruit coming in. Um, downside to these, though, is they, they get a lot of worms. Just like our guavas. Our guavas get a lot of worms. <clears throat> so if you want some extra protein, that might not be bad, but um, that is a downside for a lot of us. Right here, we have an one of our mangoes that is in full bloom. We've had fruit off of that before. We're looking forward to that. Those are tasty. And bananas in the back. I'll we'll wrap around and look at those a little bit better in a minute. Here's another papaya. And we have a moringa right here. This is another excellent plant to have. Supposedly this is super high in nutrients um, if you wanted to stop taking multivitamins 
it said you can just start adding this into your your diet as just as a supplement put it in some of your salad or put it on the top of some of your food and it's got all the vitamins that you need really easy to grow easy to propagate <clears throat> actually this one right here as you can see it's a little twig most of them they kind of grow this way but that is a cutting that i took off of this one right here You can see I cut it right there and then I just went over and stuck it in the ground and it's growing. Very easy to propagate. Great plant to have. Over here we have another Suriname cherry. This is the black variety. And then we have a Simpson stopper. This is another native <clears throat> with edible fruit. Very small fruit though. Kind of orange when they're ripe, orange red. And bananas. We've got some bananas over here I need to harvest. They don't get as big as the ones you buy in the store, but they're still good. And they just grow and grow and grow. They love water though, love water and sun. And they can't really tolerate too much cold. They will die back, but generally they just grow right back from, from the base. Obviously I need to do some, some cleaning in there. And over here, there's a strawberry guava right there that one was planted actually before we got here and like I said before the, the, the guavas tend to get a lot of uh, worms in them so we don't eat too much off of that you can put nets over your fruit but that's a lot of work this here is another moringa but this is a large variety this is got bigger leaves and it grows much bigger but again, Moringa is a great plant to have. Another thing I've heard about Moringa that's really neat is you can use the seeds to purify water. We have a Chapotacaba. This is an interesting fruit tree. The fruit, this one's very young, so we haven't had any. But the fruit on this will grow right on the bark. So for example, if I can get down here to show you. It will grow right there. The flowers will come off of the off of the bark, off of the stalk of the tree. Unlike other trees where they will put a flower stalk off the ends of the branches, it'll do it off the side of the of the tree and you'll look at it and there will be all sorts of little grapes looking fruit on there. Those are those are good too. There's a woodpecker friend. Another pigeon pea right here. Some more fruit, some more bananas. We have a tamarind here. So this is a new addition. And over here is the loquat that I shared with you in another video. <clears throat> so down here, this is an, another lesson that we've learned. This is unfortunate. We had a nice branch off right here and we had a hurricane and that knocked that branch off this is gonna this is gonna affect the tree's lifespan unfortunately but that's one lesson to learn is you know considering the storms that you have and is there anything that you can do to prevent there's not much but it's just something that you have to be aware of over here sorry about the sun this is a jujube this is another great fruit tree. Downside to this one is it has nasty thorns on it. I uh, probably won't be able to get an image of it. There's one right there. But they are, they're small and they will hook into you and break off and then you get a splinter to deal with. We put bamboo along the edge of our property as a privacy screen. Some of them are said to be edible. Um, I do your research on that though before you try anything. But there's also many other uses for bamboo. You can use it for constructional purposes. Um, uh, you would need to treat it if you wanted something long-term, but short-term, it'll work for a while. And then coming over here, we have an imbi. This is another fruit tree. It's doing really well. It's another new addition. And uh, some sugar cane here. 
some sugar cane. And then right here, this plant that you see here coming up, that is an elderberry. And that you can use medicinally, but you just gotta make sure that you, you know, you have the right plant. Like I said, you're 100% sure of the plant that you're gonna use because there's another plant that's similar to this. It's called water hemlock and that is not edible. Down here, we have another new plant. This is the canistel. So this is another fruit tree. So some of these we haven't been able to try yet, but again, we're only about four years in, so it does take a few years for some of your plants to produce, unless they're grafted. And even then, I've noticed that it takes a while for them to really get their roots in the ground and get enough nutrients to produce good fruit. There's another Moringa there. They kind of grow like really long. So a lot of people, which is good, you trim them down. I could cut this way down here and it'll bush out really nice. And then I could take those cuttings and, and plant them wherever. It's not the prettiest plant if you're looking for something nice and pretty, but for nutrients and food wise, it's a great plant to have. Here's some flowers on it. The bees really like these as well. So the, that right there is a strawberry tree. I'll wrap around and talk about that a little more. This is the Barbados tree that I mentioned earlier, the larger one. And we get fruit quite a bit off of this one. I love those cherries. Those are really good. The birds love them too. So you gotta be quick. You gotta be quick because they're, they're on it. They will get them before you do, or they'll get in there and they'll peck some holes in them. <laughs> And that invites everybody else in. <clears throat> so, some more sugar cane here. And here's a chaya. Another chaya. More olive tree. And this is the star strawberry tree here. It's called strawberry tree, I believe, because the fruit tastes similar to strawberries. Some say it tastes like strawberry ice cream. My wife loves these, so we have quite a bit of these. They're very easy to, to grow and to spread. Actually, some of these are growing from root. Um, we had a storm and it knocked some of the branches off and I think that stressed it out and those roots just started to pop up. So um, that's something to, to know about that plant is it will spread and the birds eat them and we've had some pop it up, you know, in different places of the yard which isn't too bad. It's not super invasive or anything, but this one's something to mention. It's not a, a f edible or medicinal plant, but it is something very useful. This is the uh, toilet paper plant. And in case we run out of toilet paper, you could use this. Let's say we have another shortage for some reason. I don't know what happened there, but that's... Uh, that's something you can use. It does like sunlight. It's really easy to propagate. Where we have it now, it's shady. So it would do better if we moved it. There's another one behind it back there. This vine that you see here is passion fruit. And it's uh, it's lost all its leaves because of the cooler weather, but there's some fruit still in there. We've, we've already, already harvested most of it, but there's a few left that we can get to. So that's a great, great vine to grow down here. I forgot to mention over here we have a longan and it is in bloom this is one that was grafted but i don't know if it is going to i don't know if it's going to produce it is it's still very small but that's the longan that's another good fruit tree over here we have sea grape this is a native as well and it does produce edible fruit they're not very, they're not the best. They're not quite like the grapes you'd buy in the store, but it's something. And over here we have a coconut tree, some more sugar cane in there, and more strawberry trees. This one's a volunteer right here. That one we planted there. And right here we have another mulberry. There's a few mulberries back here. This one's recently planted. There's a papaya there. Some 
avocados. Here's an avocado here. These ones are newly planted. There's another one there. Water chestnut. There's another avocado. This one's been here a little bit longer. We've had some fruit off of it, not too much. That right there is a Pakistani mulberry. And that is a really interesting one. It does super well, maybe half of the time of the year. And then the other half of the time, it, it looks dead. We haven't had a lot of fruit off of it yet, but that's something that we're looking forward to. That's the Pakistani mulberry. And underneath it, we have some firebush. This is a native. The fruits on it are edible, although they're not exactly flavorful. The, the birds like them. The bees and the hummingbirds love the flowers. So that's an excellent plant to have as well. All right, friends. I think that just about covers everything when we're talking about the food forest. There is a lot of ornamentals that we planted, a lot of pollinator plants and host plants and other plants that we've just used for wildlife habitation. Um, but I just wanted to make a quick video on our food forest. So there's a lot of lessons that we've learned, like I said, really consider the temperature changes, how big your, your, your plants grow, the spacing in between them, sunlight, water, the pH of your soil. Consider the maintenance that it's gonna take. So it, it is a lot of work, um, but we really enjoyed it. We've, we've learned a lot along the way. There's a lot that we would do differently, but there's, there's a lot that, that we've, we've gotten out of it, a lot of reward. I know I didn't go too much into the details on each, each plant. If there's any of them that you'd like to know more about, feel free to make a comment on it, and we'll try and do a video about that one plant because we could we could make one video on one plant and talk about its needs and the pros and cons and its benefits and uses so if there's any of the ones that you've seen in this video and you're interested in that feel free to comment and we might be able to bring that to you so if you've seen anything in this video that you're interested in and want to know more about feel free to comment and let us know and we'll do our best to either make a reply or we can do a video on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found something useful. Until next time, take care.